Today's episode of Bible Study Greek discusses 1 John 1, verses 1 and 3, and addresses the problem of what happens when you get a very complicated Greek sentence, and how do you even get started? There are two things that make this verse, and verse and a half, I should say, complicated. One is that you start with this series of relative pronouns, And the second is you don't get to the verb until you get down here to verse 3. And I guess a third issue is there's no express subject, so you have to get it out of the verb. Remember, normal Greek word order is conjunction, verb, subject, direct object. Obviously, that's altered a lot for emphasis or other reasons. But when you don't get that normal structure... And especially if you have this long introduction with uh, no clue where the verb is, what you have to do is you got to go find the verb, look at his person and number, see if there's something in the nominative for the subject, see if there's a direct object. And then what that does, it gives you the basic structure, and then you can put the pieces together, okay? So what you have here are a series of five relative clauses. What was... From the beginning, what we have heard, remember that's that perfect of a cool. What we have seen, well, how do we see things? We saw them with our eyes. What, and then here's another verb for see. But And when you get those two like this, probably there's some nuance of difference. Normally people just don't use exact synonyms without a, any significant change in meaning. The older English is beheld for theaomai. It's the idea of gazing at learning as you reflect. Horao is more just to see something. So I don't know how you want to translate that. What uh, we have beheld, what we have gazed upon, uh, something like that. So but what we have beheld and, and now you get another part of the same relative clause, right? Our hands have touched. So you have these two verbs. uh, And here there's just no express subject, but here there is an express subject. So what we have seen and our hands have touched. And then you get this prepositional phrase. And one of the advantages of phrasing is that you have to decide what modifies what. So what is the pre attached to? Well, it kind of makes sense to say what we have beheld concerning the word of life, but you have it at the end. And in Greek, if you want a modifier to modify everything in a series, you just put it at the end. So it's also possible that we're to see it understood there that our hands have touched. Well, touched what? Well, touched something concerning the word of life. But you've got to make a decision. So what we have beheld and our hands have touched concerning the word of life. And then in the Greek text, there's a dash there. I just put ellipsis. You have verse 2. And then John picks up with the fifth relative clause. And basically, he's repeating what he said in verse 1. What we have seen and what we have heard. (sighs) Finally, here's the verb. Remember, the main verb cannot be in a relative clause. So, etheasamatha, epselafesen, or up earlier, akekaomen, or ain. None of those can be the main verb because they're inside a relative clause. So, here's your main verb for this sentence. We are announcing also to you all. So, what are the functions of the five relative clauses? Yeah, the direct objects, aren't they? We are announcing what was from the beginning. We are announcing what we have heard. We are announcing what we have seen with our eyes. We are announcing what we have seen and our hands have touched concerning the word of life. And we're announcing what we have seen and have heard. We're announcing all these things also to you all. We have seen them, we've experienced them, and now we're going to announce them also to you. So the basic rule here is if you have an awkward Greek verb uh, sentence, go find the verb, find its subject, see if there's direct objects, and then put all the pieces together.